happy Monday! Thank you for joining me here. Uh, we're continuing on the embroidery of the month for the next couple days. Uh, we got all the rest of the ribbon to do and uh, this handle to do as well. So thank you guys for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can just relax and craft together. Uh, so I'm here for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the process along the way. So thanks you guys for joining me. Again, we are continuing on the embroidery of the month. Here's the actual finished one. It is the fabric scissors embroidery. So we will stitch this uh, this week till we're done. Uh, and then I will show you how to take off that stick and stitch stabilizer uh, with water. So this is basically that sticker that the pattern is printed onto and I'll show you how to uh, get rid of that. Uh, this is a bundle that's available uh, for sale right now on penguinandfish.com and it'll be there till the end of July. So uh, you might wanna get it. <laughs> it's, it's like five more days and we are out of July already. It's just kind of nuts. <laughs> All right, uh, thanks for joining me everyone. Let's get going. Okay, I have the instructions up here on the iPad. This is the pattern, and the pattern is included in the bundle, the digital pattern, and it's also available on its own, too. All right, everyone, I hope you had a lovely weekend. We are back at it again here. I'm just uh, paging through your comments. Um, I think we are going to just continue with this ribbon uh, right now. I'm kind of wanting to just finish that part up. It's, it's, uh, it's calling to me. And it looks like I need to start a new piece of thread here. So I already have this mess of thread started. Grab myself about 24 inches or so. Oh, Gretchen says, I love the names uh, of the floss uh, so much. I'm saving the sleeve bit with the name and swatch of the floss. Yay! So far I'm loving the celery. Ah, yes, so celery is that, um, let's see, do I have any in the, oh yeah, I do. So here's, here's the celery. <laughs> it just looks just like celery. All right. So I am stitching with three strands of floss. So I'm going to separate the three from the six. So this is our new embroidery floss. Uh, a preview pack of it, of it comes with, um, comes with the bundle. So there's 23 different colors. So 23 skeins of, of floss, but they're, they're called pocket skeins. So they're all, they're all like half size mini skeins. So it's perfect for little projects like this to just kind of grab and go and, and play with. So uh, I'm, I'm loving using them so far. It's been fun. All right, let's get our thread conditioners out too. That's been exciting to use. Let's use uh, Rainfall tonight. So these are the Wisecraft handmade uh, thread conditioners from, from wisecrafthandmade.com. I think I, I put a link to it in one of the uh, oop, I got a couple pieces here in one of the Facebook posts uh, recently from the in the Facebook group. Hello, hello, everyone. Oh, good. Haha, <laughs> Colleen says I'm coming in loud and clear from the left coast. Oh, well, she's watching while working on a baby quilt. Ah, best kind of quilts. They get done fast. <laughs> and I like baby quilts because you can, because they are so small and kind of quick projects, you can play around and try new ideas without investing tons and tons of time into them. So that's kind of nice. All right. So, ooh, that smells good. I'm going to weave into the backs of these blue stitches here and then we will um, go around here. But let's try and kind of map this out a little bit. Think be a good way of doing this maybe it's like that game where you have to like get from one side to the other without without like 
you know, where you have to keep your finger on the line the whole time. So I'm thinking about this. I think I'm going to go around this loop here, and then I'll go up to here and get this inner loop, then come back to here and then get the outer loop. And then I'll be at this area too. Ooh, that is a good mapping out. Okay, we're doing that. That will get us around that shape without hardly any jumps in there. That's, that's what I'm going for. Save that floss and a little bit of puzzling at the, at the beginning to figure out. All right, so I'm just weaving in that end so I don't have any knots on the back. Okay, let's go. So we're just doing doing the back stitch for all these. So you guys, I stitched up. Um, I stitched up August's embroidery of the month over the weekend, and I'm so excited for it. It's um, extra special. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy enjoy um, stitching it. So. That will be August 1st when you can see that. Oh, Libby. So Libby, I am getting the thread conditioner from Wisecraft Handmade. And then you have to go to shop, her like shop page. And then there's a thread conditioner um, pull down or a thread conditioner link. So it's Wisecraft and then Handmade at the end uh, dot com. And there's the three. Oh, here we go. I don't know if you guys can see that. Wisecraft Handmade dot com. Uh, so there's three different flavors. The Huga, which is kind of like a warm kind of pear smell. Um, Earl Grey, which let's smell this one again. Yeah, I mean, this is still a warm smell, but it's but it has a dryness to it. So this is a bit more deserty than than the Huga. Let's call it like that. Uh, and then then the Rainfall, which I actually think is like the perfect Christmas scent. Uh, it's, it's kind of like wet pine needle. I kind of love it. So that's, that's turned into my favorite one. And that was the one that I thought I'd like the least, but I think, I think it's my favorite one. It's just such a yummy, happy smell. <laughs> but yeah, I've been having fun using those lately. Uh, I never used to use them a lot, but it is it is kind of nice. All right, stitch around these curves. So July is almost over, you guys. Gosh, that means we are almost headed into fall. <laughs> Not quite there, I guess. We've kind of let the garden go a little bit, which is a bummer. We, we, um, well, we just, we started getting zucchini out of it, but the squirrels or chipmunks have been eating all the zucchini. Ah, so it's kind of a race or, or, like one's got to hide good enough that, that the chipmunk or squirrel doesn't get it. So huge plants, but something keeps eating it all. And we have a bunch of kale in the garden too, that we need to just pick kale and kohlrabis right now. So we, we got to get to it again here. So I think we'll, I'm just going to finish this outside part of the ribbon and then, uh, um, and then I think I'll go jump back over to this handle. We'll outline the stitch in purple first. I'm um, at least the outside. Yeah, might as well maybe do the inside right away too. And then, eh, we'll just do the outside. We'll do it the same way we did this. We did the outside, then all the, flowers on the inside, um, all the little French knots, and then we'll just get that inner circle when we're done there. Ha! 
Hello, Emanestra. Thanks for joining us. Alright. Hope everyone else had a nice weekend. It was a it was a heat warning deal again for us um, our Friday and Saturday. So that that was warm. We were at the office all day on Saturday, but I had um I had it uh, we kept the door closed so it stayed a little cool in there. Oh, so Charlotte says squirrels usually don't like strong peppermint smells. Oh, and they don't like hot pepper. Maybe put um, one or the other around the plants. Uh, I would give that a try yet. I think we got some hot pepper stuff around here that we could do. Yeah, it's so annoying. I mean, like, we'll have one good year of something, and then the animals find it, and then then every other year after that, they've, they're they on to us. So we've had to put up more fencing every year, and uh, it's to the point now that we really have to put like a dome of fencing around our whole garden, or or around each bed at least. So I mean, <laughs> we haven't gotten to that stage yet. Oh, Anna saying, I'm guessing it takes practice to have the stitches the same size. My stitches are all different sizes as much as I try to make them the same length. I'll keep plugging away. Uh, I actually don't make my stitches all the same all the time. I, I, I do, I find myself that if I'm going around a curve, I mean, these are all pretty much the same, but if I'm going around like a tight curve, my stitches will get smaller. And then if I'm going like down a long runway or like a, you know, a long straight line, uh, then, then I tend to make them longer. Um, one thing that I find helps a lot is using the stabbing method. That's, that's where I'm, that's what I'm doing now, where I'm going straight down, you know, straight down through to the back of the fabric. And then I'm coming straight up. Um, I think that allows for more accuracy than if you're going in and out, like in the, you know, like when you're going in and out in the same motion like that, that sideways movement, I, I think gets far less accuracy than this straight up and down with the needle movement. And then after that, it's really a practice of looking far away at your design and then looking close up. Like you can get stuck just looking at your last couple stitches and you're just stitching like with that, just like looking straight at that and nothing else. But if you back up a bit, you can, you can be like, oh, my stitches here are kind of smaller than what I'm doing now. Um, I'm going to start making them a hair smaller so that the overall look will be as if they're almost all the same. Um, so it's just like a quick, quick thought like that um, from, you know, looking at the whole picture and then, then going back into your stitches one at a time and just trying to make it the same length as the one before. So it's just that constant coming back and then into focus. And then the other thing is when I get to about this point of a line and I have about, you know, this uh, three quarters of an inch or so left, I think to myself, all right, would my stitches be more the same length if I divided into half or if I divided into thirds, you know, maybe if I divided it into quarters and then uh, sometimes it's in between and then I'll just pick the, the amount that I feel like is closest to the size of my current stitches. So in this case, I'm going to divide this space into three. So one, two, three and I think that'll be closest to what my current stitches look like. So whenever I approach, whenever I'm getting close to an end of a line, I'll kind of make that assessment. Like right here, like right now I could either do three or I could do two. And uh, like if I just do two, these are kind of a little bit bigger than my current stitches. But if I do three, um, it's quite a bit smaller than my current stitches. So I'm, I'm going to just I could go either way, but I'm going to do the two. But yeah, so every, every line 
that I, where I'm approaching the end or like, you know, a point as I'm approaching like this point, I'll think about this too. Um, what should I divide those last bit of stitches into? So that's kind of, those are my kind of two, two techniques. They're like looking from far away and then close up and far, like always assessing the hole and then jumping back in, assessing the hole and, you know, actively, um, analyzing the stitches from far away or like, you know, oh yeah, they're getting bigger now or they're getting smaller. Okay, let's adjust. That constant adjusting and then, then yeah, just thinking about it as I approach the end of the line, those two things. And obviously practice. Oh, and this, this up and down movement, the straight on movement of the, the, um, stabbing method of embroidery. Like right now, right now I'm thinking, okay, how many stitches? Should I do four or three? Right now I'm thinking three. So I'm going to divide this space in my head by thirds. Oh my gosh, we're going to be playing some thread chicken too. I just realized that I don't have that much thread left. And I still got those little bumps to go. Let's hope I can have enough thread. <laughs> Well, that didn't take that long to stitch and I didn't have to jump around that much either. That's great. When you do the running stitch, so you have to sew it. You don't have to. So I actually find it a little difficult to do the sewing method where you, the sewing method is where you go in and out with the needle at the same time, like in the same motion, you go in and out and then you pull. Uh, versus the stabbing where I go all the way down, then all the way up. Uh, so typically with a running stitch, like if you had like loose fabric, it's a little difficult with a tight, the fabric tight in a hoop. So if your fabric is a little looser, you can easily go in and out and in and out and in and out and then pull. Uh, and that'll, that, that's, that'll be the running stitch. However, in this sort of situation, um, where... Ooh, I tied this in a little knot. Where um, I'm in a hoop like this, and and I have this stick and stitch stabilizer on, I find it a little difficult to go in and out. So I probably will stab and pull up on each one of these running stitches. Even though in theory the sewing method is so super fast because you can load up like three or four stitches on your needle before pulling it through. Um, just the scenario that I have here, that's not going to be the easiest thing and definitely not super accurate to the stitches that I have on here. So I'm going to cheat it and just go all the way up and all the way down. Okay. So I'm reading Okay, so Amy says, question, I did tra the tracing method with blue pens. Um, now I wet it down and the fabric is all wrinkly between like the scissors and the banner. Okay, even after ironing and I'm putting it in the hoop too tight. Amy, I think that is probably, you're probably right with that, um, that conjecture that, uh, you might be just putting it in the hoop too tight so that when you take it out, it kind of contracts again. Um, the other thing is maybe your fabric is shrinking just a little bit after you're getting it wet. Um, that could be the case. Uh, try getting, I mean, if you want to still get it wet and stuff, um, try getting it fully wet, like how I'm going to with, with this, when I take this off, I will be submerging this and then doing that pressing. Uh, I think you've probably seen this before, but that pressing method where I put that fuzzy towel down and I press all the water out of the back with the iron and that might help a little bit. Um, so then it's all like drying and cooling at the same time. Okay. Deborah's asking, I'm going to weave in the ends while I, glance up and read this. Um, Deborah's asking or saying, I gave the July fabric only a project to my daughter as a gift and she got it today. Yay. But I'm worried that she will not be able to download the PDF. Oh, um, 
because you receive the acknowledge. Deborah, feel I mean it's a gift. I mean feel feel free to email it to her. Yeah, you just feel free to email her the um the project. All right. Garbage. I'm like, where do I put this little piece? <laughs> Had a little garbage pile going, but it's gone. All right, we got that ribbon uh, outlined there. Let's see, let's move on to the flower. I'm gonna do that purple outline first. That'll be easy enough. And then I will refer to my iPad over here where I have the digital pattern brought up. You can print it out, that's totally fine. Then you can see all the colors, but sometimes I just like leaving it on the computer and then I only print out the sheet that I need to trace. Okay, purple, let's start there. I think I gotta cut a whole new piece. I have a whole mass of floss that will make good pom-poms here uh, when we're done with this project. I am hoping that by August, by, by next, next week really, um, that I will have the floss up into the, up in, up in the shop just by itself. Um, so it'll be available hopefully soon, more than just uh, as a preview bundle in, in this. Oh, Gina's saying, um, Amy, if you tried steaming it, that could, that could be a solution too. That's kind of basically kind of what I'm saying with getting the whole thing wet and then pressing the back. I think that's going to give you a similar effect to like kind of steaming the whole, the whole thing. Okay. Purple. Grab my needle. We're ready to go. So I'm going to weave in the ends in some of this blue here and then we'll go around. I like, I like making myself areas that I can weave into later. That's why I'm doing this outline first, because then I can weave into the back of, of, um, backs of those stitches, those purple stitches to do all the rest of these flowers. So I'm always kind of looking at ways to make it easy. Oop, we're going up here. Let's go this way first. It's looking pretty on the back though. This is giving me a good sense of what the colors are all going to look like together. Ooh, I got a funny little piece already. I might have just cut it, cut it weird. I got a straggly little string there. Oh, we had a salon. Um, we had haircuts by Alyssa <laughs> day. Um, uh, yesterday too, so that, that was fun. Got a, that was uh, John's third quarantine haircut. I think I'm getting a little bit better, a <laughs> little bit, a little bit better at at the haircuts. I'm getting getting those fades a little bit figured out. <laughs> it's it's been uh, been fun. Can get can floss get too old and become weak? Pam is asking. I would suppose so. Um, I guess I haven't come myself into a situation where that's the case. But oh, I didn't put thread conditioner on this one. Oh well. Um, but I um. I don't know, like it makes sense that it would, but I mean, it would really have to be, I don't know, exposed to the elements and somehow I would think, I mean, it is a organic material really, right? Um, but you know, other things made out of cotton and stuff last, you know, hundreds of years, you know, cotton quilts and, and all that sort of thing. So um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I mean, I have heard 
So it's all probably about how it's stored. So if you are finding some thread that's been sitting in like an old musty sewing desk for, you know, 60 years, <laughs> you know, before it comes to you, then, uh, you yeah, know, they might be a little bit more degraded than fresh new stuff, but that might also just be a, a, a smell situation. Um, oh yeah, so that's what Amy says. Amy says, I have had floss for 20 years and may depend on how it's stored. That I mean, that's, I guess, how I would think about it. it I would assess at how it's stored. Uh, I know I've heard people say that, you know how you can get those cute little vintage spools of thread that are on like the, I don't have any near me, but I, I was collecting them. Those little, um, uh, like on the wooden spools that are just so cute that you sometimes find in old, old sewing drawers. Um, I've heard people say to not use those on your sewing machine. Cause maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe it fuzzes up differently. I'm not sure. Yeah, Pam, or Paula is saying, I'm using 30-year-old DMC, and it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I've had, I've had floss for ages and ages, and I haven't seen any sign of degrading. But I suppose, in theory, it would make sense. Yeah, so Jenna's got a good point. She says, sun exposure or heat or dampness might affect thread. Dampness, for sure. I'm sure that'd be like anything else where it could mold or... Um, Go bad. I'm curious though. I'm gonna, I wonder if anyone has had that issue on the interwebs. But yeah, if, if it's protected, I don't see any reason why it would go bad, you know, in less than 200 years, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, like I said, there's like so many well-used quilts out there that are still in great condition. I mean, a lot that aren't, but they're not degrading on their own either. Oh, that's, that's a good tip. Uh, Gina says, tug it. If it breaks easily, I wouldn't use it. Otherwise, I think it would be fine. So it's also a matter of do you know where the floss came from or like what brand it is or anything? I mean, or like what the contents are, because there's a lot of cheap thread out there, um, especially a lot of like polyester based thread that that's not going to act the same as, as a cotton thread. It actually might be a lot around longer, but it doesn't, you can't take the strands apart as easily. And um, there's some other weird things with, with like polyester embroidery floss. So uh, it depends like, yeah, the, depends the brand too a little bit. Yeah, Nolene says antique and vintage embroidery seem to last okay. So <laughs> here's an example. My um, mom rescued a quilt that my great grandmother made. Um, that my grandpa had been using to protect his air conditioner in winter, like for moisture to come on the inside. So this, this quilt was wrapped around this air conditioner, like indefinitely, right? So not good, <laughs> not good conditions as far as sun and moisture and just all of it, right? Bad. Uh, so my mom rescued it. <laughs> I think she did have to clean it up a bit. Like it had, there was a lot of white fabric in it and I think it kind of yellowed. So I think she got some special detergent and stuff, but th that was one of those quilts of the, um, the, like the birds of art, like the States. Um, I'm sure some of you may have seen this before. It's, it's like, it's all the States, like each, each block is a different state and it has like the state bird and the state flower and all that. So, I think it's a, it was a pretty common design. Uh, so all that embroidery is still just fine on there, on that, on that quilt. 
after mom like washed it up and everything and it's all in perfectly good condition. So first of all, that is a very old quilt. It was an abused quilt and floss still seems, still seems good. Uh-oh. We're getting these knots now that I, that I haven't conditioned it. Actually this, um, the end just wrapped around the middle there. Oh, there we go. We're fine. trying to place where that quilt is now. I, I, I feel like I see it sitting in a room in the house, but I can't, I can't, um, oh, I think it might be in like the guest room. It's pretty though. It's got all those embroideries on and then it has uh, like blue, like like royal American blue <laughs> sashing. Uh, it, the blue is really pretty with the white squares with the embroidery on. If I remember correctly, I may be making that up, but that's what it looks like in my head right now. Oh, nice! Uh, Tracy's using her, um, her thread conditioner on a binding. Yay! Oh, so the, we'll have a full week. So the Splendid Sampler, um, so uh, um, Tracy's saying, Alyssa, do you think Finish It Friday can be this week instead of next so you have a full week for the Splendid Sampler? Um, there will be a full week for the Splendid Sampler. Um, we, we didn't do it at all this month, so that was a little abnormal. Um, this has been an abnormal month for our projects because of that, because of the Orphil. Um this month. Uh, so we will have a full week of the Splendid Sampler. It'll, it will be week two, so it'll be the second week. The first week um, will be the uh, Granny Square Quilt. We'll probably still do Finish It Friday, but I suspect that we'll get done with um, this in a couple days here. This project is you know, a different timeline than what we normally do too. So we'll, we'll do this the next few days. Um, gosh, I think we'll be done. Hmm. We'll either take the, the stick and stitch off on Wednesday or, or on, or tomorrow. It depends kind of where we get tonight and tomorrow with stitching. I'll prep the water at least, uh, for tomorrow in case we get that far. I think I'm going to just squirrel up here and do this inside circle right away. I'm going to just jump across. It's going to be covered in the, usually I don't like jumping across shapes like this, but it's going to be covered up in so many stitches on the back that I'm not going to worry about it. I just have enough purple to do it. And I think I'd like to get it done. But yeah, so we'll actually have a couple days this week that we can do some finish it Friday stuff too. Some just like freebie day projects. Oh, so Jenna says I have a half finished state flower quilt. So I think that's exactly, I think that's exactly the quilt. Um, so yes, we will have a full week of the splendid sampler, but I still think we probably will have a finish it Friday. So we'll just have like the four days of the granny square quilt. Um, so I'm thinking of later this week when we have those couple days, I was thinking that we would work on the label for the koala quilt. That is the last little step on it. We got to get that label. Um, and I, I would love to have your thoughts on what should go on the label, like what information. And I think I might, make a post in the penguin and fish crafters group um so that we can put all the answers in in one one spot so 
um, you know, like the date or like the amount of time we worked on it or, or how many people were involved or, or, you know, I don't know, or like some nice little phrase that we should put on. Whatever you think should be on this label for our, our group quilt, that, that koala quilt, that you'd like someone to know about the quilt, um, whoever ends up with, with the quilt. So I'll, I'll pose that question over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. And, and then um, towards the end of the week, we can decide, okay, what's the final bit of information that, or like the final decision on information for the label and then how are we gonna get it on? Like, are we gonna stitch it all or just permanent marker it or, I don't know. We have that cute koala to stitch on too, so we'll make all those decisions. <laughs> if if we if all we do is make the decisions on that stuff, that will be moving ahead. <laughs> that will be moving ahead in that project because that's that's a big part of the label is just deciding what's what's gonna go on there. Oh, this is cute. This would be cute without all the flowers too. Just um, just some outlines. Yeah. Ooh, this would be actually really cute without the flowers. Look at what it would look like with just some purple outlines and the rest of the scissors. Gosh, I kind of like that. I'm just peeking on the back so you can see it without the stick and stitch stabilizer. Snip. Okay. Done. Next up. All right. So let's do some flowers. I think. Gosh, they all are really scattered. I'm looking right now. I'm looking at the design again. So um, I'm going. I'm looking right here, so I can see the different colors for. Uh, the flowers there. So I'm just thinking, okay, if I do that first, then I jump to there and then to there, you know, I'm just trying to kind of map it out a little bit. And they're all, all the light colors are pretty far away from each other, which is on purpose. So it looks like scattered around. Um, but I think I'm going to start with that coral. Uh, it's that, um, you're a peach <laughs> is the name of the color. Uh, and it's there, these little three guys there and those little three guys there. And we'll just travel in the backs of the purple stitches to to accomplish that. So anyway, I am, I am, I have that open and I am paying attention to, um, paying attention to the colors. Uh, I'm looking at the, the PDF there. I think it looks like we have a whole pile of this already split into three. Eh, it's not too much. It, it's probably enough though. Is this three strands too? Oh, this is a nice long piece. Okay, I'm gonna use this. We'll use the longer piece. Yeah, this is three strands. Let's get it in the thread conditioner this time though, cause, cause it smells lovely. Oh gosh, I don't, okay, I'm, I'm seeing that. Um, hold on. I am trying to block that. Okay. All right, done. Um, I saw that, saw that Paula. So thanks for, thanks for showing me. So that should be taken care of now. All right. Oh, that's a great idea. Deborah says I need to do some small quilted items like a placematter bag so I can practice some free motion quilting before I tackle a decorative uh, walk. Well, any chance you'll be doing anything like that? Ooh. 
We could. You know, I, I've, that's actually been on my brain again, the um, free motion quilting. I bet you there is some little project that we could just putz around on a day um, to do that. That would be fun. Actually, you know what? We could do something with with this when we're done. Like the, you know, we'll have a couple days left. I, I do want to work on the koala. Um, but maybe we'll just come up with what it should say on the koala label. And maybe we could have like one day of free motion quilting. That'd be kind of fun. Ooh, what should we make with this scissors? Now I really want a three free motion quilt. I, I've been thinking about it lately because I was thinking about my uh, triangle tango quilt, you guys. That triangle tango quilt is sitting ready to quilt. It's all pinned together. And that's where I was going to draw up a design on the back. And I've been thinking about that lately. So I'm, I'm kind of itching to draw that design and uh, do the free motion quilting on, on that project. I'm getting caught up here. So, so it's been on the mind. So obviously my body wants me to free motion quilt again, I think. <laughs> uh, so yeah, why, why, don't we, um, why don't we make something with this scissors? I don't know what though. What should we make with this scissors that I could free motion quilt? and not turn it into a giant project. <laughs> uh, I suppose it won't have to be a project. I could just free motion quilt for the heck of it On, onto this. Ooh, but I'm just seeing it like we could trace, we could trace the whole outside. That would be kind of cool. And uh, oh, we could put like flowers or something in the background. That'd be neat. To kind of go with the flowers here. Yeah, and then we can go over like whatever questions you might have for um, free motion quilting. Oh, well, that's a good point, Sue. We could actually, yeah, we could just, we could just quilt whatever size this this um piece of fabric is or we could just make an active decision like we could we could decide to make it like nine inches when we're done um and i could just quilt a bunch of these to nine inches and then we'd have a little i don't know quilt as you go project a potential later quilt as you go like if we just happen to have a pile of nine inch quilted squares around we could turn that into a quilt as you go project that'd be kind of fun could do whatever we wanted with a quilted square it could it could become a little a little um zipper pouch later or or anything else but they'd be all ready to go as finished quilted something or another's Gosh, really, you could just, if you had a couple, uh, like a couple quilted pieces that are just around, in theory, it has like, if, if you made it into a bag, in theory, it has the inside already, right? Because that would be the back of, the back of, um, you know, whatever the back fabric we would put on for our quilt, our little mini quilt, our mini um, free motion quilted piece. And, uh... You could just put some bias tape around the edge to attach all the layers together and you'd have like an instant little little bag. That'd be kind of fun. All sorts of options, but I like that idea. That'd be kind of, that'd be neat. Oh, Laura is just asking me about the triangle tango quilt. Funny. Okay. Uh... Finish that guy. Next one is these little three, three furs up there. I'm gonna just kind of travel behind the stitches versus having a big leap. Okay, yes, these three right here. I think we're getting pretty far in this today. Um, I do think it's gonna take a little while to do all this text though, and we still have a lot happening in here. So I'm going to guess 
that Wednesday will be the day that we take off the stick and stitch stabilizer. However, we may be able to prep it for some free motion quilting right away though. So we could do Wednesday, we can take off the stick and stitch, prep it for the free motion quilting, and then Thursday we could have a day of free motion quilting on onto the block. Ooh, I like that idea. Um, yes. <laughs> Pamela saying, so mutant creative ideas tonight. Yep. Those are the funnest kind. Ooh, a mug rug for the scissors mug. <laughs> That's a good idea, Sharla. I like that. I do really like the idea. Zipper pouches have been on my brain lately, too. That would be... That, that, that's something I want to do soon um, is do a, a zipper pouch, like just a real quick zipper pouch project. And then I can get us like some zippers and stuff so that they're available. Yep, I'm going to think about that. I, I like that, too. Oh, I'm with you, Sue. So Sue is saying I'm officially addicted to making the granny squares after all that cutting. Yep. Yep, that's that's the that's the, like the upfront penalty of that that project is the uh all the um all the cutting, but after that it's just like just fun 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 fun. This is, yep, this is it for the, um, for the Euro peach color on the scissors and actually on the whole entire piece. So we have another, oh, I guess we finished the purple to, today too. So we finished the lime green, we finished the um, uh, lilac season is the name of, of that purple. And um, this orangey, uh, pinky orange is called Euro Peach. And so we'll finish that color as well tonight. It's always fun when you get to an end of the project and you don't, you're done with like, you're done with the colors. Alright, let's weave into the end. Ooh, Deborah, I don't know. I'll have to look into that. Oh, Amy says, I'm too scared to use white as a mug rug. That's a good point. <laughs> All right. Snip. Okay, now what? I think we have time for one more color here. Let's do... Let's do this kind of yellow gold. It's the goldenrod color, I believe. Here, they, here it is. So this color is also the color of the type. The fabric only that we'll do later. Oh, Sue, that's that's exciting. I'm so happy you're you're um liking it now. Yeah, I mean, this was an exceptional amount of cutting at the beginning. The the granny square quilt was more cutting than I'm used to um with a project. Um and a lot of times I'll cut as I go, like I'll I'll do the instruction like only what what I need for the next instructions and I'll cut the next stuff. But this time I cut it all at once, which is, you know, it's nice too. Cause once you're done cutting, you're done um, versus having to cut more. Um, so I put all the torture up front <laughs> for myself uh, on the granny square, but yeah, that, that was more cutting than what I'm used to at the beginning of a project. But ugh, it is really fun making those, those blocks. All right. I'm going to keep using rainfall. I like this one. Uh, 
I'm gonna see if I can order some of these for the shop. Um, they're just super nice. I think they would be like really nice little um, stocking stuffers for crafty friends. I love how small they are. Like it's just this itty bitty tin. Um, you know, I have small hands, so it probably looks big, <laughs> but I have little hands and it's just like the perfect size for throwing into whatever project bin you got going on. Oh, Anne, absolutely not. So Anne is like, is it too late to join the party? This is a beautiful pattern you're making. Nope, this is, uh, it is available till the end of July. So you got, you got, uh, you got five more days. <laughs> um, uh, that's how long the, oh, geez, sorry. <laughs> that's, um, it's just the embroidery of the month. So it'll be available to the end of July and then we'll be getting a new one for August. We may bring some of these back at some point, um, but right now I just have them scheduled for the embroidery of the month. But I'd like to at some point introduce some of these as like fully fledged um, kits versus our, our little bundles. Ooh, smells good. That's the, that's been the most fun part for me about these um, red conditioners, these particular ones. I still haven't bought the thread um, magic. I, I'm still gonna do that. I'd never remember it till I'm right here though, um, to try that out. But like these, these ones smell so nice that, I mean, yes, they coat the floss like how they should and all that, but like I, I, kind of like using them just because it's like it's just a yummy smell it's like stitching with the, and then like having your like favorite candle burning next to you like you just feel special because of you know of the scent like you're doing something special that you didn't need to have you didn't need to have a pretty scent while you stitch but you do, and isn't that special? That's that's what I like about it. Oh, so um, Kathy has been Kathy made hers into a zipper bag. Yay! Amy she and I don't often get along. Oh, but tonight we're fine. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yes, I'd love to see um, over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group, Kathy. Um, so Patty's asking, what does the thread conditioner do? So it's, as far as I know, I haven't, I'm not like a super pro. I'm just testing, testing them out. But from my experience right here and from what I hear other people say, I mean, it, it's, it's basically like prepping your thread to stitch with. So it is coating it. This is a beeswax based, um, based conditioner. I guess there's silicone based ones too, but this um, beeswax one, you're basically kind of waxing your thread. So you're, you're coating it with like a little layer of wax, which is a little goofy feeling, but um, it makes all of these threads just lie they just play nice. Like they're, they're, um, they're not twisting up on themselves at all. Um, and in theory, it protects it from all the friction of going through the fabric over and over, over again too. So, um, right now it's acting as a detangler and a yummy smell for me right now. But yeah, I think the idea is that it's, it's, protecting your thread and, and keeping everything lying nicely together um, to help re prevent like over twisting and tangles uh, while you stitch. All right, I got one more up there. I'm gonna just, let's travel through the middle here. And I never, I hardly ever use them. And um, I, I happen to get these ones 
And now I've been using it this entire time on embroidery floss. Like I've, I've never used it on embroidery floss before this project. And it really is fine. I just thought it, it would coat my thread too much and it would be kind of weird, but it's, it's not. It's, I mean, there is a waxy feel to it, but um, it seems to be working well. Like I, I don't get knots or I haven't gotten knots when I've been using it. I haven't even really been thinking about knots, and usually I kind of, it's in the back of my head to pay attention. <laughs> Amy says, I like to think of thread conditioner just like hair conditioner. Just keeps everything smooth. Smooth and healthy. But yeah, um, it's like making all the fibers lay flatter and against each other. Oh yes, yeah, so Kathy, oh, Kathy says, oh, I thought you were asking. Kathy says, I love getting the kits, especially the ones with the stick on patterns. Yep. So that's the, uh, the stick and stitch stabilizer. This where I, where it just sticks on like a sticker and comes off with water. Then uh, the pattern is printed directly onto that. Yeah, that's been, that's been, um, in pretty much all of our bundles. And I love this product. It's, it's one of my favorite products to use. It's that stick and stitch by Sulky. And I just, uh, I just print up a bunch of them for you guys before, before we get going. All right, that's that. Let's put that last anchor stitch. I don't think there's any more of that color. Nope. Uh, this color is used later in the fabric only, so we're not completely, completely done with it. But, ooh, it's pretty. It'd be pretty if we just did, like, orange and, and yellow together. Those two kind of different oranges. That'd be fun. Oh, I'm really excited now to, to stitch this, to free motion quilt this for no reason. <laughs> no, no reason other than to do some free motion quilting. There's nothing wrong with that, right? I don't need a reason. <laughs> there, Sue says a detangler for thread. No tears. I like that. Oh, and um, the other Sue, <laughs> the Sue on um, YouTube says, once you use thread conditioner, you'll never want to go without it. That's how I've been feeling um, during this project. Like, I'm like, oh, the thread conditioner's here. I'm going to use it. It's just just nice. It does um, one of those, like I was saying last week, one of those things like, eh, I don't need, I don't need that stuff. But then once you use it, it's like, oh, okay, I get it. It's a fun little extra fun thing to have. All right, there we are, you guys. I think we will end it there for the night. Uh, yeah, I definitely think this is going to take us two more days of, of, or like one full more day of stitching for sure. Uh, so we will definitely not get to the taking the stick and stitch off tomorrow. Uh, so let's just plan for Wednesday to take off the stick and stitch and prep the piece for free motion quilting. That, that'd be fun. All right, so thank you guys again for joining me tonight, and here we are. It's coming along, getting that color in the handle there. This is nice to have that top little loop finished off now. That feels like, just having that done makes me feel like we got uh, somewhere on this. But yeah, so a few more flowers. Flowers will for sure finish tomorrow, and uh, I think we'll do the text. I might do the that extra little stitching in conjunction with the text. Like I might work on them at the same time or like back and forth between each other. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but yep, we'll keep working on this tomorrow. Uh, it is available for this month yet. Uh, that's just Saturday's August people. <laughs> Crazy. It's also John's birthday on August 1st. So that'll be nice too. <laughs> you'll, you'll have to wish him a happy birthday on, on Saturday. <laughs> He'll like that. So, all right, you guys, have a great evening, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.